Hey everybody, welcome back to the Zenith 750 Super Duty build. Now, in my opinion, the absolute most fun part of building an airplane is designing and building the instrument panel. And that is what we're working on today with the help of Steve at Aircraft Specialty. I'm gonna show you something really cool. All right guys, check this out. I've turned the camera around so that you can see the panel. You'll see here that I have the original aluminum panel from Zenith, and on top of that, I have a clear cutout panel. Now this clear part isn't going to be my actual panel. Right now, it's just a template. All right guys, let me kind of tell you what we're doing with this panel. Now I've been working with Steve at Aircraft Specialty, and what I do is I kind of, on my computer, just kind of crudely, I you know draw where I want things. Like I want the, the Dynon parts in the middle, the two screens and the switches and stuff like that. And then Steve took all that info and he put it basically into a CAD file and made a real nice professional drawing. And I think I showed this in my last video, but here's a, a look at my panel. Um, it is gonna change a little bit from that picture, but uh, you know that was our final version. Once, once we got the final version done kind of on paper or on the computer, then he cut it out of acrylic and sent this to me because this is the final fit on the airplane. With having this acrylic, I'm gonna show you in just a minute, we can put all the instruments in here and the switches and everything and just make sure the clearance is good, make sure the fit is good, make sure it looks all right. Because it's one thing just to kind of design boxes on a computer screen and it's another thing to actually put your instruments in here and see how they look. All right, I wanna give you a close up look at these because I wanna point out some neat features of these clear cutouts. Now you're gonna notice that all of the mounting holes are drilled as well as all of the holes for the nut plates. So there's really nothing that you have to do other than rivet on the nut plate. Also look closely and notice the very thin laser etched line which indicates the outline of each instrument or switch. That's how you can really see where everything will be placed. All right guys, now this is the fun part. So I've just got a switch here. I'm just going to put in one of the switch holes. And you know, all you have to do is let them know what diameter hole you need for whatever kind of switches you're using. And they can cut all the holes to your exact diameter. Same thing with things like the, the throttle or mixture or any push pull cables you have. You just let them know what, uh, what size hole you need and they, they can drill any size hole you want. So I'm just gonna put two switches in here just to get an idea. So there we have two switches. We have an EFA screen that mounts, it fits perfectly right in there. And of course, if this was the real panel, I would have the nut plates in there. All I'd have to do is put this in here and put two bolts on each side. And we have, in the middle, we have the radio. You'll notice how the, uh, uh, the, the panels cut out exactly for, for each of these. We have the autopilot controller. We have this other one here. Now I'm starting to bend down a little bit. And um, let's see, we have on the top here, this is the, the ELT controller box that goes, that fits perfectly right in this hole. All of the, uh, the four holes are drilled for that. And of course the, uh, the Garmin 175 will go in here, but there's actually a mounting bracket that goes behind that. I'm not sure if you guys can see, but I have a, a USB cutout for up here. So I'll put a, um, what do you call it? A USB extension from the back of here up to here. And that way when I, to update the Dynon database, you just plug a, a USB right into there and it, it updates. So now one of the things that, or one of the huge benefits of having this template, is I was a little bit worried about, you can see the bottom of this Dynon angles out, which is the, the thing I love about the Dynon. But I was worried that it would kind of hide the switches down here. Because one of the things you have to be careful with the, uh, with the Zenith panel is you can see the bottom edge is just bent over 90 degrees here. And there's a bar or a steel tube that goes behind here. It's part of the cabin frame and that's how this panel mounts. So all of these switches and circuit breakers along this bottom row have to have clearance above that bar that's on here. So 
that was one of the things I was concerned about is would there be enough room for the switches between here and the bar, but not have this angled part of the Dynon hide the switches. And, you know, when you're just looking straight on with a piece of paper or on a computer screen, you really can't tell. And that's why I love having this clear cutout uh, because now I can actually see if, if things need to be repositioned, like does the Dynon have to be moved up or the switches have to be moved. So with this in here like this, you know, I can set this up like this. And I think if I, if I am sitting in the airplane, now this would be actually be better if I could, if my airplane was on the gear and I could sit in there, but it looks to me like if I have the labels for the switches under the switches, then th this panel or the EFIS screen does not hide the switches. And I think it'll, it'll work out just perfectly. So that's the, uh, uh, the, the clear panel for the center section, like I said, all of these just fit absolutely perfectly. All of the holes are lined up perfect. And, and I mean, they should, you know, aircraft specialty gets these files from Dynon. Um, so you don't even have to provide them anything. Like I said, the only really, the only thing I had to provide to them was what size holes I need for the switches or circuit breakers or, you know, the throttle and, and things like that. So this is a perfect fit of the center section of the panel. All right, now I wanted to show you this. Uh, this would be the left-hand piece here. Uh, one of the things I have in my cruiser, and this is actually made by Aircraft Specialty, so you can order this at the same time. I absolutely love their flap switch. Um, so you can see it has a nice base plate like this, and it has this, this lever here that kind of looks like a flap. And you'll put a switch in there, and then this gets you know, screwed onto the switch like that. Uh, and it works perfect. You can see how that works in my cruiser. And I have this mounted about the same way. So the throttle will be right here. We have the flap switch right here, which is easy to get to. Then I have, uh, I don't have it in here, but this is the, um, the elevator trim switch. And then you can see here, I have the, the Dynon dimmer switch that dims the screens. And on top of that, I have the autopilot disconnect button. And again, these, uh, Hopefully you can see that there. All of the holes are all pre-drilled um, for, for the nut plates. All you have to do is just get the nut plates, rivet them on, and then uh, put this, oops, it's upside down. Put this on and put a screw in. So this is the left, left side piece right here. Now let me explain why I have this cut into three pieces instead of just one panel. And I'm gonna show you why having these clear templates really kind of saved my butt on this. The original idea for having this in three pieces is the two end pieces, these kind of like triangle type pieces, were basically going to be bolted in place and that's it. The big center piece here with, with everything mounted in it was going to be mounted with a hinge on the bottom so that this would fold down like this, giving me access behind the panel. Now for the panel, you can see this black line that I have around here. Basically, it's gonna be a three quarter inch lip around the whole panel and the whole center section of the panel will be cut out. So you can picture with that cut out, when this is folded down, I would have access to everything behind there. But a couple things, the reason that's not going to work. You'll notice how high in the panel that this uh, GPS is mounted. And don't forget there will be a skin on the top of here, basically your glare shield. When this rotates down, this little box right here is the mounting bracket for that GPS. And it's probably, let's just say six, with the cable six to eight inches long. When this rotates down, the back of this was going to hit that top skin. So I really couldn't make this rotate on a hinge. So plan B was I'd be okay, I won't mount it on a hinge, I'll just screw it on. And then if I need to get behind a panel, I'll take a couple of those screws out and then this will lift right out. But, and this is where these plastic things kind of saved my butt because when I was looking at this on a computer, I really didn't anticipate this. This hole right here is for the mixture control. Now, you know that mixture control is a big quarter inch cable that goes all the way up to through the firewall and into the engine compartment. So imagine if that was bolted onto here this would not be able to rotate like that. Now I know some of you guys are already thinking because this is what I thought of at first. Well, I'll just make a cutout here and then mount that mixture on a, a permanent piece 
And you know, that is possible to do, but it's not what I want to do. I think that would look bad having another cutout here. It would make the rest of this panel a little less secure. Uh, you'd have to find a way to mount this onto that bar securely. It's just not something I wanted to do. And that's what's really nice about having these instead of just looking at this on a computer screen. You kind of really get to see how things are going to work or maybe how things are not going to work. So I have a new plan and I've been talking to Steve at Aircraft Specialty about this. Instead of having my panel cut into three pieces, I'm now going to have one panel. So basically these, these two pieces were, you could think of just, we won't have that cut here. It'll just be one complete piece over the entire panel. I'll still have a couple screws around the perimeter to mount it. And so now, it's, I mean, if I really had to, I could take this off, but w the real access point will be these two big, huge holes here that are behind, or that are made for the EFA screens. Because these EFA screens have four screws each that hold them on uh, with nut plates. So if I really needed to get access behind the panel, obviously I could go under the panel, but if I had to get on top, all I have to do is take out two screws or four screws on each of these EFA screens, take out the EFA screens, and now I have two big, huge holes here uh, to get behind the panel. So one of the other cool things about what aircraft specialty can do with these panels is they, they not only just cut it out, but they have the capability to completely finish your panel. They can, they can finish it as in a powder coat and then they can uh, either laser etch or silk screen on the, uh, all the labels for the switches and circuit breakers and, and things like that. You can get your end number put on, whatever you want. And that's actually what I'm doing. I'm having aircraft specialty completely finish this panel. So when I get the panel back from them, I'll just be able to screw it right into the plane and it's done. Just, you know, put in my instruments and it's ready to go. But imagine now if I would have just bought the, the finished panel, um, I would have got it started putting things in and then realized that it's not gonna work because I can't fold it down or take it out with the mixture control in there. And then when I got these clear panels, when I opened up, when I was putting switches and stuff in, I opened up the box for the, the Ray Allen trim switch and I completely forgot that it has an LED indicator for the, the elevator trim position. So there's nowhere in here that I accounted for this. <laughs> so. You know, now I have to make a revision, but imagine if I would have bought the final panel, received that, and then went to put in my trim switch and then realized I don't have any place to put in the, uh, the LED indicator. So I really like that Aircraft Specialty does this, to get the clear panel first, test everything out, make the changes, and then go forward from there. Now I wanna show you guys something else that I think is pretty cool. This is the center section or the center console option for the Super Duty. And you can see I have the Dynon D10A mounted here with the intercom below it. So first of all, a lot of people asked why am I putting this in here? Like I already have two EFA screens that are independent. One's a backup for the other. I have this in here for two reasons. 10% of the reason is to have a third backup. 90% of the reason is because it looks cool. <laughs> That's it, I just think it really looks cool to have a screen right there, so why not, right? But what I decided was, instead of getting the D10A for now, I actually got a D3. This is their little, little portable one. And let me take this intercom out of here for a minute. Um, it actually mounts in a three, it's three and a half or three and a quarter, whatever the standard instrument hole size is, it comes with this little mount. So. For right now, instead of having the D10, I just got the D3, which is a portable instrument. I could take this and put it in my cruiser if I wanted to. But what I wanted to show you, what's pretty cool, is Aircraft Specialty made another clear uh, template for this center section. So we have the, uh, this just go, pushes in like that. Nice little mount from Dynon. Then we have the intercom. It goes in there like that. And of course that would, would go on here like this on the panel. So this is pretty cool too. This is my, my center console piece with a D3, the intercom below that, which you know basically looks like, like this. And then as far as this right here, I'm still working on a placement for the, the switches. And I think this will be the key, the master switch, 
and then uh, like the parking brake. And instead of putting that dimmer on the panel, I think I'm gonna put the dimmer down here. This is, this is a little bit open yet. Then we have the, the fuel selector. I'm kind of still working on that. But really what I wanted to show you was this, this other little piece from Aircraft Specialty, this other clear template. My D3 and the intercom mounts in there. And so it'll look just like this. Well guys, I'm super excited about this panel. I think this is just really neat having aircraft specialty, be able to laser cut everything out, finish the panel, silk screen on all the labels. It's just gonna be such a nice professional looking panel. I can't wait to get the final panel from them. Of course, when I do, I'm gonna show you guys, I'll make another video. Like I said, after looking at my template, I did have to make a couple changes. Um, so the design will be a little bit different. So I'll show that to you guys too once I get the new uh, template from Aircraft Specialty. If you want, go ahead and take a look at their website. It's on the screen, it's in the description box below. If you wanna give them a call, talk to Steve. Great guy to talk to, super helpful. Can probably do pretty much anything you want with your panel. So if you want a nice professional panel, which is what I really want in my Super Duty, this is the way to go.